Here we go. Catfish, this is it. We're doing it? This is round two. Round two, we're doing it. The Mike Hunter podcast. (laughs) Do we explain what happened the first time? Yeah, um, I've heard a lot of different people over the years um, entertain the idea of consuming alcohol like heavily on the podcast. Hoder actually tried it out. But in, in, in Hoder's defense, it was 100% your fault because when Hoder got you, we said podcast at 8 p.m. It wasn't anyone's fault. It was mine. No, but, <laughs> but at 8 p.m., you were here. You were funny. You were talkative. We were, it, you would, it would have been a really good interview. And then we were waiting on 22. We waited for like an hour, and you guys were like, how much longer is it going to be in? I was like, I don't know. So you, they went and got more beer. And then I, I think that's stopped. that's when we went downhill right there. The funniest part was that he kept getting distracted by this girl that I had here who had like a really big ass and he was just fucking he kept like mid conversation just getting distracted and being like oh and just staring at her. Oh, man. But there were some, uh, I mean, <laughs> there were some definitely highlights and there's some really funny my, stories. My, I don't know if it's, it's ever going to see the light of day, but there were some really funny stories. Maybe one day, but my favorite story that like just needs to be told right away is the one about how when you were in fifth grade. You broke into your neighbor's house and stole a lot of marijuana. <laughs> Can you point that right at your mouth? Oh, yeah. I've done this before. Uh, yeah, and so uh, what did you do when you stole this large amount of marijuana from your neighbor in fifth grade? Me and Sam tried to bring it to school. Yep. So, Sam, Sam like introduce some Sam. This is the homie Sam. How, yeah. You guys are best friends. We've known each other yeah. for how long? Since first grade. Holy first shit. Grade, He's like yeah. the first dude I ever met in my life. Yeah. <laughs> the first dude. He's like the first person. Holy shit. We, we were like... Riding BMX and shit then too is crazy. Yep. What is? Is this just like Fuck. a guy walking by yeah. with a boombox? Is that, <laughs> that's that's that is. <laughs> Bring the, him downtown in downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days we're gonna get a real studio space. But okay, so you guys have known each other for that long, uh, I, Hoder. So so what happens? You steal this? How, how much marijuana would you estimate it is? It wasn't. These days? It wasn't even like buds or anything. It was just like it was like trimmings. We thought it was. We we thought it was like you know we thought it was weed, but. It, it wasn't really weed. It was mostly just like the trimmings, and we just, I don't even know. It was probably like, it filled up a pencil, I don't know. Pencil case. We went to his neighbor's yeah. garage, and he had a bunch of garbage cans full of like weed branches. And we just yeah. took, we just like ripped off a bunch of branches and like shoved it in a little pencil box. And we were like, didn't even know what we were doing with it. We didn't yeah. even like, I'd never even, I'd been high like once. My sister smoked me out, which is kind of fucked How up. How did you figure out the, uh, the going market rates at that time? <laughs> I don't even know. I, don't, I, don't <laughs> I didn't. I just sold it to my sister's friend for like, I mean, my, my friend's sister who was older for like 20 bucks. Like, just like a bunch of. A box of shake crap. that you probably can't even. But my favorite smoke. part of the story was when you guys got, you got busted, yeah. and the principal called you out. What was your excuse to the principal? It was like, there's like this tree that, like, I guess in Seattle, I've never really seen anywhere else, but it's called a weeping willow, and it's yeah, got yeah. Like, the leaves that look just like a fucking like marijuana leaf. That's what I, I just played it off as that, and like, I. I remember mean, when you got pulled out of class though, and like there was a cop, and I was just yeah, like, I was like, oh, oh shit. Shit. here we go, <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get expelled. going to the pin. So Sam, last time you confirmed that Hoder definitely was like the bad kid in in school from yeah, day one, got, right? Last time you guys asked me like, what was he like in elementary school, and he was like a big ass kid. He was fucking hella tall. <laughs> when we were in first grade, he was taller than our teacher. <laughs> He's always been the biggest kid in class. Yeah. Fat or, was, or just or No, just tall, big. tall. Okay. Well, and is just big. Yeah, big I kid. used to be fat though too. He used to be fat Mike, right? <laughs> yeah. I grew up as fat Mike. <laughs> then I grew I out of fat, fat Mike. <laughs> but yeah, he he was kind of a, a bully in, in elementary school. My bad, guys. Kind of, kind of <laughs> mean, what kind of stuff were you into back then, aside from stealing the weed that you stole from your neighbor, just uh, fighting? and No, not really. It was, it never really fights back then or anything. It was just like, just doing dumb shit that I like, like stepping in a pile of dog shit when the teacher said, watch out for the shit. Like, <laughs> what the step fuck? In the, and she, she, made, she made me like, she made me leave my shoes. It was like first period of the class or first period of school or some shit. And she made me leave my shoes outside all day long until I got out of school. (laughs) Because you had shitty shoes? Just because I had shit on my shoes. And she was like (laughs) trying to teach me a lesson. It's such a bizarre thing to do. Even from day one as a kid, I would avoid (laughs) stepping in shit no matter what, I feel like. So dumb. I'm trying to think of some other stories that we can sum up that I was really amazed with at interview number one. Probably my favorite one. And, uh, And a fact that a lot of people don't know about you is that you spent some time in Huntington Beach. Yeah. yeah. You moved down what here. age was that that you moved out there? Uh, I was 12, I believe. And was this a sad time for you, Sam, because you lost your BFF? Pretty much. I had no one to fucking ride shitty bikes around yeah. with. And 
raise hell. Yeah. So you guys both rode bikes together from like what age? Fuck, dude. We, even in like what second, third grade, we used to build like there used to be this Chinese church down the street, and we used to just build up like fucking just a lip out of bark and just <laughs> bark boost it to flat, dude. Just like that, that's what we did. And so then uh, at what, you moved to Huntington Beach, and what was that like? That's when you kind of had your eyes open to like what BMX really was. Yeah, well, I was like skateboarding when I went there, but then like. The school I went to, like, all these kids that rode BMX went there also. So I started, like, it, it was called a Dwyer Middle School. Yeah, heck yeah. Oh, yeah, we still ride there from time to time. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I was going there, and I saw, like, that's when I met, like, Dakota and everyone else. And I was like, shit, I'm just going to ride bikes. Like, so you were actually in high school with Dakota? No, middle school. Oh, middle school. Wow. That's bizarre. What, did you guys hang out in uh, different cliques? What kind of kids did you hang out with at the time? Just BMXers then, because, like, I used to go to Hidden Valley. Oh, okay. And they had, like, this... this crazy like just dip in jump out thing up on the top of the hill like beyond the burger king i used to just go there and like ride that part but like you would see like troy mcmurray nastasio all these fools killing the real jumps it's like it was like amazing to see and that's the first time you met any of those dudes yeah i mean like i didn't really know them like personally on like you know like we're hanging out type shit or something but like i would see them all the time and and back then they would all sell their old bike parts so i just buy like shitty bike parts off them how did uh moving to huntington beach change your outlook on bmx i just wanted to do it ever since then really yeah like it was and i had like i kept buying like shitty like stolen bikes all the time when i lived there and then finally like right before like my stepdad asked my mom to marry her or marry him sorry so we ended up moving back to seattle but right before that my stepdad had bought me like a fucking free agent chris duncan complete bike like, I, I went to Seattle, I got it shipped up to Seattle, and then, like, right when I got there, I went to this bike shop, Greg's Green Lake Cycle, and uh, I was, I was had the bike, like, get, like, built and put together, and, like, I was like, fuck it, dude, just keep the brakes off. <laughs> so you were brakeless from day one? Yeah, pretty, well, was, you know. Pretty much. When I moved back to Seattle in seventh grade. So when you moved back to Seattle, you kind of, like, took that motivation from riding and Yeah, riding and, like, it? and just, yeah, like, I would see Dakota, like, everywhere you know we'd go to hidden valley and build jumps there and ride them and then like it was it was getting super fun then and dakota was super crazy at the time too what was dakota like back then he was i mean he was just dakota yeah i don't think like he was he was super chill were you everyone still, was were you still getting in trouble all the time when you were going to high school uh junior high and shit yeah because i got like i kind of got like expelled in a way from like sixth grade and like Seventh grade, I don't even know what really what happened. I think I was missing school all the time, just riding my bike. And they Yo, just you kicked you out. Tell, tell the story about how you lit the kid's hair on fire in class. <laughs> yeah. You told that one last podcast. It was pretty good. Yeah, just some, some bullshit in sixth grade. Just being a dumbass kid, just kid was sitting in front of me. We were fucking with, like, flames. And, like, fuck, dude, the kid had red hair, so I just put that shit up to his hair and just caught on fire a little bit. And, like, I got kicked out of school for a little while and... Yeah, that shit was whack. <laughs> All right, so then you go back, you go back to Seattle, and then like, did you kind of find a way to immerse yourself in BMX for real once you got back there? Yeah, because there was just like this, this spot called the Green Lake Dirt Jumps, and like everyone rode there back then. There was everyone rode like, you know, I would see like just anyone back then. There was like a bigger BMX scene in like Washington, so everyone used to go there. So like, I grew up riding with fools, and then just kind of like took off. So mostly dirt to, to start? Yeah, mostly just riding like dirt and shit to start off with it just because it was there and it was like there wasn't even skate parks or anything really then. How'd you uh, get turned on to street riding or park riding or what came next after that phase of just riding the trails? <laughs> um, there was this dude, this fucking dude named Grungy Phil or Picklehead Phil or something. It was crazy. <laughs> dude, fucking <laughs> two, two good nicknames to choose from. This dude was like, this dude was like, I don't know, 30 or some shit and like. I was like fucking 14 or something at the time and he used to like he was a street rider he used to do like sprocket like sprocket grinds down big ass ledges and like crazy ass shit like 180s downstairs and he started taking me and the homie redline kid out and like whose phone's ringing i don't know mine my dad's <laughs> calling <laughs> sorry dad <laughs> but uh yeah he, th this dude's like picklehead phil used to like just take us take us out riding everywhere he had like a car and shit like we did like auto something or other and like he used to just take us out riding and we'd go ride street that's when we like kind of started out riding street and skate parks like 
me and the other a friend of mine, you know, Redline Kid. And then uh, how long did it take before you did that that famous uh, Sponsor Me tape? That was one of the first things ever posted on the come up, so that probably puts it in like 2006. I yeah. think I remember watching it before the That was 2005, I think. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Okay, so 2005, you made basically like a, a famous Sponsor Me web video to that fucking Marvin Gaye song, right? Yeah. And so what were the circumstances that that occurred under? Well, I was at... Our, I just like went to Metro Jam and won Best Trick, and uh, this dude Andrew McMullen that lived up in uh, like Wait, up so in what was the best trick that you won with? Uh, that I did. Yeah, the Metro the Jam cap to hanger on the fucking like big pyramid. That's when I had pegs and shit. Too. Oh, oh, so you were kind of off and on with the pegs in the beginning? Yeah, kind of so, and like even that sponsor me tape or whatever. I don't even know whatever tape. That shit, like I had pegs on. Yeah, you were doing Smith grinds. Yeah. Yeah. And that video is awesome because you do a shit. lot of stuff. Like, there's a lot of skate park clips in there. Yeah, there's a bunch. There's of like gap shit. to pegless ice. That was when gap to double on the like some gap to rail. But, I don't know some shit. There's were you, were you still idea. fat, Mike, at the time? Did people call you that then? Yeah, because you had like a little gut, but you weren't like fat. Yeah, I, I had like I kind of like really got that like living in California. That's like when I got like because right when I moved back, that's when I got the nickname just because it was like. I wasn't, you know, like, I guess I just started riding more and I just lost it pretty quick. You grew and, into it. And that's yeah, what, that's and what I, people say. You grew and into I grew it. And, and I did. I grew. I just, kept, just kept on growing. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I don't feel like I even stopped. Like, did you, shit. Really? You still feel like you might be getting taller right yeah. now? How old yeah. are you right now? 28. 28. That's a good age. I can't even imagine what it's like to be as tall as you. Fuck, I don't know either, man. At what point in your life did you start to feel like everybody was scared of you? Uh... I don't know. I don't think I don't think everyone's scared of me, but I think a lot of people are. Kevin, can you confirm this? Yes, Sam, I, perhaps I, you, you've noticed yeah. this. Probably, Fuck, probably like man. sorry guys. <laughs> no, it's good. It's great for us. I love going oh, yeah, out with you. No great, one's it. fucking with us when you're with us. Yeah, it's great. Uh, but I don't know. Like, so you you don't really like see yourself that way or whatever. Are you, no, I try not to. Like, I of course I get drunk and do dumbass shit all the time. But like, <laughs> I'm trying to like. I need to get out of that stage. It is fucking. It's not good. So were you you were still getting in trouble a lot and everything all through high school. Was there anything in particular that really got you uh, got you in trouble? Pre- previous not to really, this, previously not, to this I moment, did. we had a no weed smoking on camera policy, but I guess that's done with. No, this is a this uh, is how cigarette. this is it's N- just a cigarette. Oh, it's NC seventeen. Either way, it's X rated. <laughs> Rickani loves this. Rickani's super excited back there. NC. <laughs> Okay, so were you still? I want to hear about you getting in trouble back in high school and shit. Did you, any stories I didn't, that stand out, man? I didn't like really get in that much trouble in high school because I was always riding my bike. Like he wasn't thing, at school that much, you know. So I you never can't get fucking in went trouble to school. when you're not fucking there. Yeah, yeah. So I was never there. I was always out like with Davey Watson and shit, like just like filming and shit all the time. Because like I won the Metro Jam best trick, and then Andrew Mullen came up to me after I won and was like, "Hey." I live in the Seattle area. Would you like to just film for like a week or two? And that's how it all came about. I just filmed it in like straight up like two weeks. Holy shit. Filmed what? That whole that sponsor me tape. Whole oh, sponsor the, me oh tape. so that was the sponsor me tape. Okay. And, and then, then he like sent it out. And that was like, like I sent it out too. Like, I don't know. I sent it to like audits. It was just a few different shit, you know, whatever. But yeah. like, whew, yeah, I sent it out. And then, and then uh, you got, you got the bite from Sunday, right? Yeah. And then like Jim Slinsky hit me up like, before Sunday was even started, you know, and was like, hey, I'm about to start this company. Like, I'd like you to be the first rider on the team. So you were the first rider on Sunday? Yeah, the very first. You had never even considered uh, being sponsored prior to... Did you, when you made the sponsor me tape, were you thinking like this could get me sponsored? I don't know. I was, I was doing like six shit then. So like, yeah. And I don't know, it was a long ass time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It's just funny because I think with kids these days, like this is 10 years ago, but like kids now, they just do a web video. And it's funny yeah. that, like, at the time, I mean, sponsor me tapes were kind of, like, in a gray area because the, the, the internet was starting to kind of pop up in, like, 2005, 2006. Yeah, I think but with, with his, his situation. That shit got out there. But like, winning best trick at a Metro yeah. Jam, I think that's, like, a huge, like, catapult because then you know, like, holy shit, like, I won best trick and there are some badass motherfuckers in this contest. That's probably right. Was that, like, the wake-up call for you? Like, well, if I could I, do this. I, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, pretty much, yeah, I was just, like. I could, I could do this shit. You know? What was uh, what was winning that like? Because every back then, like everybody is at that contest. It was whatever, dude. I think <laughs> I think the I think the year the next year that when I jumped over the fucking hockey rink fence. Oh, and that's you right, did that yeah. little dance, right? Yeah, and then I did the dance. I'm gonna have it, to find that dance definitely. after I got stabbed in the neck with the handlebars. But yeah, <laughs> but so, yeah, I'd, 
I don't know. I think that was more exciting. It was just like, fuck yeah, like just for the moment. Over the fence, yeah. Dude. Like I was like, yo, Shad, I'm about to just go. He's like, are you fucking serious? I'm like, yep. He just got up there and I jumped. So what'd you start filming for after that little sponsor me tip? After that, well, I had gotten on like Sunday. I started like filming with Rich because I like pretty much moved down to Portland. Mm-hmm. Had like a house for like a year down there, or whatever. And like, I don't know. I was down there all the time, just riding. I never fucking went to school. I was always I'd come back for like a week or two, and then. At what point out. did you formally drop out? Like junior or er, like junior year. Uh-huh. Senior year, I was never there. <laughs> but then I ended up dating a girl, which was crazy. That, Still in high school, so I would still go back there, and like they were like, "What the fuck, like, Tyga?" <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty tight. <laughs> so when did you um the because I think a lot of people know you for facade at least when you came on yeah, a lot but, of people's radar. But wasn't the shook section before facade? Or was, yeah, yeah, the yeah. shook because like I did that that sponsor me tape or whatever, and then like me and Davy started riding all the time, and then like Davy killed it too. So and you guys are from roughly the same area. Yeah, and like, he was just. Ri- how long enough, like, did he had just started riding street at this point? Because he was like a flatlander before, yeah, he, right? Like, he grew up on like a little area called Gig, Gig Harbor, and like there's really not much to do out there. And he just rode flatland like in this basketball court all the time or some shit. Mm-hmm. And like that's when he he was like ahead of the game with the nose wheelies back oh, then. Yeah, like, definitely. And all the back wheel spinning tricks and shit. Yeah, like backwards manual everything. Yeah. And so then you just started riding with him, and you guys, how did you meet Chad Shack, or how did you get the idea to film a shook section? Because like. I don't know exactly how that happened, but like one day, like this dude Andrew McMullen was like, "Yo, let's film for a shook section, you and Davey split section." I was like, "Fuck yeah, I'm down, whatever." So we just started filming for fucking shook, yeah. and like it came out and it was sick. That's a legendary section, though. You yeah. still had pegs on for a few things in that. Yeah, right? I did. Yeah, and you were just. Was there any like particular clips that stand out to you when you try to think about that time? Hmm. There's like one double peg to drop at the end. Yeah, There's that, actually a couple double peg to drops. Yeah, mostly that double peg at the end. Just because they got drop. <laughs> it's crazy, dude. I, I tried like to double tire down the rail like maybe six months after I tried that and it was the winter and I completely missed my fucking front tire, dude. It was the worst. <laughs> it was like a you know, thirty degree day. Your hands hit the pavement, dude. It feels so damn good. <laughs> <laughs> what's uh, what's your worst crash? Oh wow, yeah. Where's crash? That's a good one. Uh, well, worst injury. Let's start with that one. That might be easier to remember. Worst injury? Uh, I'd say my feet. Just dealing with my feet all the time. I broke both my feet like right when I got on S and M, and ever since then it's just been like from impact landing on stairs really? with, with shitty shoes, low techs. <laughs> oh man so you are you hating on low tech that was one of your earliest uh sponsors are you you're not a, a big fan of them do you have beef i saw some instagram nah, stuff. just it's not that i have beef it's just like that shit is i don't know i feel like i got dicked around and like i don't know it's just like whack in I what was, way i don't know just because like for one i like barely designed the shoes i i said like a color you know like uh-huh. that's all my input that i had and like Rich was impossible to get a hold of and like never answers his phone and I don't know what planet he is on now. But like <laughs> yeah, I just like couldn't that's why I quit. I just couldn't like handle it. It was like it wasn't worth three hundred bucks. How did you get down with low tech in the first place though? Because I that's was how there. I was with Rich, like hanging out with Rich filming for like a goods video, I believe. So you've been down with him since like way back in the day when he Yeah, when it first goods, started, right? when it was like when it was like the beginning of low tech. Yeah. And, like, I don't know, it was just, it felt like after wearing them for, like, 10 years, you think you'd, like, get a little, you know. What, this, the, did the. A peanut. <laughs> the little, situation wasn't improving, you're saying? It wasn't improving at all. Okay. And, like, people just kept getting on. And, like, I was there when, like, I was sitting in the car with him when he, like, put, like, Edwin on and shit. And I was like, yo, like, you're paying this full hell of bread. Like, what's good, bro? Uh-huh. Am I ever going to make that, you know? Yeah. And I didn't, so. But that's the BMX industry, right? That is the BMX. Money, you know? is, money is not easy to come by in this industry. That's a fact. Which is weird because all the fucking companies are making money. All of them. Supposedly. <laughs> I don't know. I think Low Tech definitely had some. I don't know. They had some in the years. Beginning, they had some. Was in the beginning, off. it was huge. Yeah, and then it, I, it felt but like. In that era, too, a, a, there was a lot more money in BMX. 
True, yeah, the, like the 2007 era. I feel yeah, like that the pie they, has gotten that a lot they've smaller. definitely like cuz I don't know from when we had Rich on here and stuff he was saying that the sales are like a lot better and that they've just been they've definitely put out a bunch of people to the team and stuff and everything in their defense. I don't know. I don't want to speak on behalf of them but yeah. voters, you know, obviously that didn't work out but whatever, whatever. Uh you so cool with Rich or not not I don't know. I like he gave me wheels the other day and then I like I didn't even see him like couldn't even say what up so I don't know. When I quit the team too, like it was fucking whack because I was like, I quit the team and then like he wouldn't like he wouldn't answer the phone. Like I couldn't. I had to talk to Brenner about it and like because he wouldn't answer the fucking phone. It's like, and then like you know we kind of started you know we like kind of argued shit back and forth whatever. But eventually he still wouldn't. An- he couldn't even answer the fucking email, dude. Like you know I yeah. hate that. That's a- you can't even answer a fucking email. Like I sent like six of them. I don't know. Not one. Yeah. Well, uh, one of his one of his things that he said to me though was like, if you were if you were wearing low tex in the 180 Hollywood high shit, you would have been our highest paid rider. And I was like, well, fuck, dude. Like that. That's when I was like killing it. Yeah. Like even before that, it's like maybe you should have thought about like being like, oh, let's give this fool a check now, and then being like, all right, so I I like wear the shoes. Yeah. in that shit but it was like back then i was just getting free shoes it was like at what point did you get on pro fuck dude i don't even know like 2008 maybe i don't even know yeah okay well there's a few was, good years there right yeah i guess <laughs> oh pretty fun that's rough so uh what about all right so sunday you were on sunday yeah and- i was on sunday and just like i don't know i was just fucking i felt it, it felt the same way it was like all that shit, you know? Like, Initially, though, I mean, like, when Sunday started, like, they had a squad. Like, they had a obviously. fucking squad, and I was the first one on the team, so I was like, I was like, you know, like, I'd see these people getting on, and I know they're making bread. Ian Schwartz isn't riding for a company not making bread. Yeah. Like, I know Vinny Salmon's not riding for a company, you know, like, not making bread. But yet, I'm not making bread, and I'm <laughs> fucking out there doing the same goddamn thing they're doing. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Because... <laughs> Fucking, he's a shady fucking piece of shit, dude. Jim Slinsky, man, is fucking. It's just whack, bro. Like, no longer with the company, for the record. Yeah, no there you go. Sunday. There you go. What happened? What happened there? Yeah, how would that situation unfold? What with me? Yeah. yeah, it was just like, man, fuck. I like, I was like going on like trips with them, you know, filming. I went to Atlanta and then like came down to L. A. and like, I w- Well, I was like kind of like being a fucking, you know. Cause I wasn't making no money, so like I would just sell all these bikes. I get all these bullshit color fucking colorways. I was like, it's the same as the bike I got. Like it's just a different color, so I'm about to flip it. You were getting too many bikes. You were saying like once yeah, a month. The, or yeah, something? they would they would send me them all the time. Like because they were that was when like the company had started. So they're like all these colorways and shit were coming out. And like, so what they want you to do with the old ones once you put the new one together? I don't know. But, but you were just selling the new ones. I was just selling the brand new ones. Uh-huh. Like. The shifts were flying out the door like hotcakes, bro. Like you can't do that shit anymore because you have to like take a picture and put it on Instagram, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. It doesn't right? really work the same <laughs> way as it used to. I think that's like definitely how a lot of people have got kicked off the team. Like that's why Black Man was off Animal way back in the day was for flying sure. parts for sure. And I would never do that now. You know, fucking S and M's held me down since day one, and that's like they've held me down. So like, you know, they have nothing to ever fucking worry about. How did how did that come about? Because I think a lot of people when they first heard that you were on S and M, everybody was like. Match made in heaven, right? Because like, Hoda's perfect. the shadiest motherfucker, or is shady, is shady. No, dude. Are you offended by that word? <laughs> loose. He's just loose. He's loose. And there yeah, have been loose. so many he loose cannons it. that have been in, on S and M over the years. That's why we talked about all before. Loose like, as fuck, bro. Like, it's, it's crazy that his first time to Huntington, he, he met McMurray, and then years later, yeah, riding for the same company, yeah, leading, leading the pack. Fred McMurray was he an influence on you in any way? Hell yeah, dude. Him and the Guns. Dude. I used to see those like old ride videos and shit, and like, like I think it was like Ride On or something. I don't even know what this. Yeah. Was. And like Chris Toth, like all those dudes that had like fucking big ass, like what were the knuckle bone knee pads or something? Yeah, shit. the pro they're design, huge. the pro design. They're yeah, fucking yeah. like the biggest things. You look like they look like fucking shoe boxes yeah. on their fucking knees, dude. And like <laughs> they were just just bombing down big ass shit, like just the biggest stairs, just fucking grinding big ass rails. That was the shit, you know. Like, who were your influences to be pegless from from early on? Kind of the guns. Because like he was always McMurray like, too. He had a, a McMurray too. The end, he, he went they're back always back. like off and on, you know. And yeah. I thought that was like sick. And then like eventually it just turned into like no pegs. When did know. when did you realize that you could grind rails without pegs? Probably like right after that shook shit. Yeah. Like right in the beginning, like facade. 
days because that's when I like did like that big that long peg list ice and shit and then like do you remember your first peg list rail I do it was in Bellevue I just down like a little like seven stair square rail uh-huh. and then I ended up going back there like maybe maybe a year later and I, my buddy was like oh you try trying 180 grind it no pegs and I just did it it just worked fucking perfect and was, I was that like, footage in anything no nothing we wow. were just sitting there one day and he was like he's trying 180 grinding because i could i was like doing it at the skate park a little bit here and there and i just tried it and that's when i had a fucking the sprocket was on the right yeah you couldn't get wheels left hand drive yeah so like i was still doing it with like you know with, with the sprocket there. grind it was a 36 <laughs> so you're like dude. grinding on the fucking chain on, like, ring the chain, and shit dude, it was right? crazy uh, on the yeah it just worked though. holy shit that is crazy Damn. So that, another one that comes to mind immediately is the the manual. You like manual the ledge and then kept manualing a facade and then you did a pegless rail. That was like released as like oh a single God, clip dude. on YouTube, I think, at yeah, the time. That was so. I can't even believe I did that. Dude. Why was that? Sc- that was scary at the time. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, well, it wasn't scary then. Now I'm scared. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, there's <laughs> a lot of crazy scary stuff in that. That one, the big gap you do. Yeah. What about the gap in the, the bank? It. Let's talk about that. Oh yeah, Garfield High School in Seattle is just. Everyone, I used to jump over like the littler part. There was just like a littler ledge, or not a littler ledge, but just like less of a drop down. But that thing, I just haunted me for years. And then you would like, think about it all the time. Was that like every, it's a local spot? Yeah, it's just like a local like spot. It's good for riding bikes too because the banks are real tall and steep and shit. And like, mm-hmm. The ground's not the smoothest for skating, so like it's pretty good. So I'm assuming that happened first try. That clip. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Second try, fuck. What was it like the day that you went there? It was crazy as shit, dude. I showed up there and like Bruce flew all or flew. Bruce drove all the way up there from Portland just for that one clip, and I was like, "Fuck, dude, here it goes." I'm either alive or dead, (laughs) like one (laughs) of the two. But I went there and it was like it was like middle of the day, kind of like rush hour. I was sweating, you know. Like I did, like I've never never done so many run ups in my life. I did probably three hundred, dude. So you're there for hours. For hours. And like there was these people across the street in a third story apartment, this family, like this African American family just in the they're fucking <laughs> that's they, you you don't talk like that in the real in the real world. This African American family. But okay, just for the record. That was funny. All right. <laughs> pay, pay, don't pay any attention. Don't pay any attention to him. I'm sorry. And uh yeah, it was just crazy. You like offended them. Right. <laughs> offended me. But uh what you call it? There's this like family hanging out the fucking window, dude, and they were like third story window, like the whole family just fucking, you bitch, fucking do it, you pussy, like fucking, come on already. Not this is like fucking three hours of this shit. Like, Holy I'm like, shit. and I'm doing this thing. I'm like, I'm for hours, like, for hours they were going off. I mean, I'm like doing this shit. I'm like, dude, I'm about to either die or be alive. Like, quit fucking yelling at me, fool. Like, I like that it's out of the window, too. Nowadays, so like I'll be doing view. that shit to other people, but like, fuck, man, come on, bro. <laughs> it's fucked up. So then how'd you feel when you finally pulled it? Dude, I just was like, all right, man. I'd, I'd been like three hours, and I was like, dude, I gotta just fucking go for it. And I just jumped it, dude. And when you like look at it, like in slow-mo, dude, my tire's it's like so a, close. It's like a quarter inch from hitting, dude. <laughs> I would have flew 30 feet to my dome. Holy and shit. Out for life. Wow. So uh, after Facade, the next project you started filming for was? Dude, after Facade. Um, what did you, what'd you go on to next? I feel like I'm forgetting something obvious. Here. Sunday like, Mexico trip, maybe? I didn't really like, I didn't really film for anything. You kind of after, chilled after that? Yeah. What was, what like, was your relationship like with Bruce? It was good. Like, I just knew him like Bruce from like, Christman. Yeah, I just knew him from like riding and shit, like going to Portland and stuff, seeing him all the time. And then like he said he was gonna start this company, and I was he's like, "Yo, you want to ride for it?" And just you and Davey and Seth, Kimbro, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, dude, that'd be sick." And then like it was sick. He just took us on like a he was riding for Adidas at the time, so he got like he like took us down to fucking. He got the DVD sponsored by Adidas, right? Exactly. Just because yeah. there was a tiny little logo in the beginning too. Yep. That's fucking crazy. And he got it like, but it wasn't. They didn't give us like. 20 grand to go fucking oh okay so it they gave us like money. five grand you know like oh, still here good. yeah go on a trip so we came down to california and that's when like i 180 to hollywood high gap and what shit. was that like yeah. did you fall on that yeah dude it took that took i think three days to do wait but three days how, how do because, you try that for three days no nah, because i do it i did it one day this is when i rode for like sunday at the time so like i did it one day and tacoed both the wheels on my bike and i was like fuck dude <laughs> went to odyssey got a new set of wheels Went back there, 
The next day, tried it again. Fucking talked with the brand new wheels again. I was like, I'm not doing this shit. <laughs> so I went back and got this fucking other set of wheels and ended up finally pulling it. But it like took literally three days. And, oh, like, but one try per day? One try per day. <laughs> That's the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. One try per day. Destroying dude. both those wheels. Those things were done. What was it like Those pulling Odyssey that? Those Odyssey wheels were fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like pulling that? Obviously, at such a historic spot. I was hyped. You see me in the video. Yeah, I'm fucking yeah. jumping around going crazy. <laughs> That's so I just, fucking I, amazing. I was like, cover. Yeah. Did you know that you were going to get the cover right then and there? Of course. Of no, course. You always think you're going to get the cover, I think. I think you have that disease. No, no, no. I, I, I don't think I thought that. Who shot time. that? Jeff Z? Jeff Z. Okay. Hold it down. Was that your, what, what other color covers have you had? I just had that and the Ride UK cover like pretty much right after. And that was another like clip in the facade part. What, what, uh, what photo was that, though? The 360 down the... Fucking bonered out 360 down the fucking like oh yeah down like the six the big six oh, the big okay. seven or oh yeah, yeah yeah did we how many stairs is that equal to roughly you think that's bigger than El Toro it's probably the same size but it was tight because I landed on fucking rubber like a rubber track so <laughs> oh it was rubber down I was cheating place. guys oh, and people didn't know what no uh, what knew. setups do you do you look for do you like to ride fucking big shit that just like. Dude, I can't be sitting around trying tricks all day. Dude, I'll fucking lose my damn mind. I just gotta be able. To- <laughs> you don't like tech riding in general? Hell no. Could you do a switch one eighty on flat ground? Maybe if I practice. <laughs> <laughs> but you can manual. You can one eighty. Like you definitely consider yourself a rider that doesn't do a lot of tricks, right? Hell no, dude. I hate tricks. Tricks are for kids. Were you like that when you were a kid? Though, were you trying to learn bar spins and doing all this shit? Or no, not really? really. I was mostly just like going to the trails, just. Not even really 360s right away, you know. That shit just came about one day, just fucking around with some stair set, and like, I didn't, you know, it, I didn't really give a fuck about tricks. Can there's, we talk? When- there's no point. Like, I, everyone else is trying to learn all these fucking tricks. I was this, just trying to jump some shit. This is the point in the video where you show clips from his demo tape of him like doing like an yeah. eight foot invert, on right? A mini ramp. Like, okay, but I just remember something really good that I want to talk about is when you used to be like beefing with Sean Burns way back in the day and you used to just go to all the spots that he had done the gap and just three everything. <laughs> what? I think Sean Burns like referenced it. I forget where it would have been, but he like referred to you in an, in an interview was, or on something. He, he called you like this dude who was following me around doing the I don't trees remember over all my how, I don't remember exactly how that all started either, but I know that the Brooklyn Banks three was definitely a big... Because Cause that's why I, I saw him jumping. I was like, oh, I'm about to three that shit hole. <laughs> that was the whole reason Sunday flew me out there. They sent me there for a month to three a gap for one day. One, and, like, so hour. it was nothing personal with Sean Burns, though? You just happened to, you wanted to do it? I don't know. It might have been at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, be real with us. You nah, didn't like I don't know. something? No, nah, we just like, I, thought, I think like, because at the time, Jimmy, Le, Jimmy LeVan was living in Seattle. I don't think we kind of didn't really get along. And you like, and Jimmy? Me and Jimmy. Why is that? I don't even remember like fully. It was just like he didn't really like what. Oh, oh my god! Because you were like a little now weird remember, kid with like no. Jimmy now I, hanging off. now I, I remember know. he, my homie Redline kid, made him a fake MySpace at the time. He made a fake Jimmy Levan MySpace. Fake Jimmy Levan MySpace. That is and a it great got him idea. So fucking mad. He was like calling all of us. Take this shit down. That's not me. Like knew we made it. Holy <laughs> like right right off the bat, me, Jack Maddock, and this kid Redline kid. We used <laughs> Redline kid. That's a great nickname. I've heard right. that over the years. Wait, so but, but so then, did you have any particular reason that you didn't like Jimmy Levan, or was it just? Nah, he, he didn't like us after that. It was like <laughs> that was like all right, make me a fake MySpace, bro. Come on. So you kind of just assumed that you and Sean Burns weren't cool based on that. I think so. Yeah, and then I just was kind of just went with the flow. But there was something else that, too that you. Threw. Yeah, there was. I, I forget what it was though. Yeah. Man. That's a shame that I, I can't remember. remember. Too many dabs, dab lord. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the dab lord? <laughs> Fucking Noah over here. Noah. Oh, okay. Dab <laughs> king. Noah dab, dab lord. Right. Dab lord. <laughs> wow, the dab lord. He just got the illest shout out ever. That's amazing. All right, so like, uh, okay, so we just went back over the, the little Sean Burns thing that I wanted to ask about. I'm so glad I thought of that. If I had actually taken notes for the show, then I would have. I would have thought of that, but I fucking. I didn't do any kind of preparation. Well, for this it's at all. all on your shoulders now because you fucked up the first interview. So I would not say that I fucked up the first interview, but uh, all right. So continuing on past that, um, you get off a Sunday. Yeah, I eventually got kicked off because like I was selling all the bikes and I kept going on these trips with like the same first bike he gave me that I spray painted gold, <laughs> the whole bike and like it's he was pretty obvious crime. Yeah, yeah, and he, it was just like a dead giveaway. I I call him, you know, like oh my bike got stolen, like blah, blah, like. 
I'd make up shit all the time, you know. Like, that was a classic scheme before the internet, though. Like, my kids used stolen. to always do that. My bike got stolen or whatever. Like, but I wasn't getting no bread, so I was like, fuck that, dude. You weren't getting paid at all? Nothing. Really? You never got paid That's crazy, too, no, seeing as how no. you're the first rider on. But the thing about it was, was like, I started like, get, dude, I got like, in one year, I think I got like 11 photos out of 12 magazines, you know, like in Ride. Fuck. And like, I didn't, he didn't pay me and I didn't get any photo contingency or anything. And then the year after all that was like popping off, I was like, holy shit, I'm getting. Then he was like, yo, I'll give you a hundred bucks a month. A hundred bucks a month, <laughs> dude. And you weren't. You weren't I know stuck. Ian Schwartz was making a hundred a month. So how'd you feel when you got the hundred bucks a month though? You were I pissed? Felt, I was even more pissed. I was like, are you, that's like the biggest insult ever. Dude, I spend that on weed in a day. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, how were you making money at the time though? At, at the time I was like, fuck. What was it? I think I was like kind of working at the bike shop then. Uh-huh. Actually, Good. no, I wasn't. I, w- I wasn't at the bike shop yet because yeah. I had like, I had sold like the last bike that got me in trouble. <laughs> I had <laughs> sold it to the bike shop and then he sold it to this guy. And then the dude was like the bike shop that I ended up working at, but he sold it to this, some random guy, you know? And then the guy put it on eBay, And then the guy right? put it on like Craigslist or some shit. And then <laughs> Bauer saw it and I was like, that was like pretty much when I got the call. Yeah. So then what was your move after that when you got kicked off Sunday? What? I was like, fuck it, dude. This sh- it's gone, bro. Yeah. It's over. You were just... I was like, fuck it. It's- and then I got smart- started smoking this real bad drug, you know? And oh, like- okay, let's talk about this because, like, you know, there's people out there that probably would try fucking smoking wet and think it's no big deal. But you told me you were, like, posted up in your apartment for, like, a year and a half fucked up off that shit, right? Yeah, I was... I was PCP Sam can probably records. fucking yeah. second that, dude. I was fucked up for, 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 like, a while. I didn't ride... Even Garrett Reynolds came and stayed with me for like a month and filmed his shook part with like uh, Wade Young at the time. And I was smoking it like the whole time then. So or can maybe you describe, got one clip. You mentioned that like you got into it because your neighbors, you didn't just like randomly start doing it, you know? Yeah, it was just like these dudes, these like three bloods that like moved there from Compton and they just like all fucking, they all smoked this fucking Sherm shit. And I was like, what's all this about, you know? And like at the time I was kind of like, you know, I was like doing fucking other shit, you know? here and there but like i started smoking it and it wasn't even addictive it was weird because like when i stopped i just stopped one day i was like i don't need to be doing this shit anymore but like it wasn't addictive i just liked doing it because they all smoked it all day and i was like shit i'm over riding bikes i might as well just smoke it can you describe for the listeners out there what doing pcp is like like how do you how do you consume this exactly you would dip like just cigarettes and vials and like i don't know this shit wasn't good man it was just like the high was bad. You, I wouldn't be able to move all day type shit. Like, it fucked me up. I don't remember shit still to this day because of, like, probably because of that shit. So Garrett Reynolds was out there riding with you, and you were you just not even going out riding or what? I would go out riding, but I'd be sm- fucking smoking some wet right before that shit, and, like, then I'd just be sitting around. And so what do you do? You have, like, a little tin of it, and you dip your cigarette in it? It was just, like, a little, like, glass jar, and you just dip your cigarette and then how, fucking how's it, make, how's it make you feel because i'm interested i've never uh i've never encountered this don't do it i'm not, I'm not tempted <laughs> but uh no nah, it's just it's not a good high you're just like i mean no, no high is a good high except for weed but i don't know it's just like uh it would just pretty much it would keep me like dead still i wouldn't be able to move i wouldn't be able to like walk i wouldn't be able to do shit and like i would just sit there all day like you sam probably saw me all the time i'd just be sitting on the fucking porch when you walk downstairs, it felt like you didn't even like go down. When you jump, it feels like it feels like you didn't leave the ground. This shit was bad. Dude. Oh, so how'd you stop doing it? One day I was just like, I, I like got a job at like this at the bike shop that I like sold that last bike to, and like that's when I was like, I need to quit doing this shit. But I was, that's when I like started getting into fucking coke, and then that, that was that's when it like got bad. So you stopped doing Sherm and started doing coke. Yeah, I started doing it a lot, like all the time. And like I was like hiding it from my girlfriend at the time. It was it was just bad, dude. It wasn't good. And like, you know, I I started losing like I lost like fifty pounds in a fucking month, dude. It was bad. And so then what? You get on S and M in the middle of all this, or was there something that happened in between? Well, then I started working at this bike shop. Like, it was weird. I was like, I tried to go to school to like get a fucking GED, and then like, I was like, man, I'm not going back to this fucking school shit, bro. This is crazy. <laughs> So then I just, I went to the bike shop one day and he was like, yo, I'm trying to like start up, a, a, you know, like get this bike shop going, but like, I want to get the BMX section going. I'd love to have you work here and like help support it and like start. And it did work. Like people came into that bike shop all the time. And like, at this point, people had like 
thought you were done. Like they yeah. thought you were never. I, I remember this. Like nobody thought they were ever going to see you again for some reason. And even working like in the beginning, the first like six months, I didn't even think about riding. I just worked or like it was just like whatever. What, what had changed? Were you just like you had like a simpler mind state where you just wanted to? Yeah, like I don't know. After that like, first six months working there, I just was around like bikes all day, and I was like finally like off. I was off the like cocaine and shit, and was off the other sh- like off the sherm, and like then it was just like. I don't know. I just started like getting more into it, and then they built a skate park right next to the Green Lake dirt jumps that I grew up riding. They built like a sick ass skate park, and then like that's when I was like, "Shit, I'm just gonna get off work because it wasn't that far, and we just ride down there." And like that's when I started getting into riding a lot more. And so then, what you get on S and M through the bike shop? Yeah, well, I was just ordering like parts for the shop all the time, and I I, I think I started talking to a uh, what, what was his name? The yellow switcheroo. Here. Yeah. Okay, so Sam just got swapped out. Sam is one of Hoder's, uh, one of his, one of my th- best friends, one of his friends, his thugs that he rolls around Dylan. with. Now we have Dylan Ambrose, who is uh, vegan. Show your team manager, <laughs> <laughs> Dylan from S and M, and uh, Fizz, he's kind of like Chris Muller's right hand man. I, I guess definitely. hello, people. You could definitely say up. maybe. Uh, okay, so from your perspective. How does a guy like Hoder, who is, you know, admittedly has issues with drugs, he's a maniac, he beats people up from time to time, he's... Exit, take that off the record. Formerly. <laughs> no, nope, I never did anything to anybody. He has been in trouble in the past. Uh, how does he end up on S&M from your perspective? I mean, he's cut from the same cloth as most of S&M's history writers, you know, almost even Moeller himself. So he fits along perfect. We love dealing with those dudes. Everybody, like, kind of thinks is out. I remember the day we kind of like sent him a frame. He was talking to Adam Zapata, who was the sales rep at the time. Thought about this after the last one. Yeah. And Zapata and him were talking a lot, and he asked Zapata for a frame because he was writing a, some other frame at the time. And he was like, writing a Sabrosa. Yeah. So then Zapata tells Benson, who was the sales manager at the time, I was just like another rep or whatever. So Nick and all of us were like, yo, Hoder wants to get hooked up. What do you think we should do? We're like, yeah, fuck yeah, get that dude a frame. He's rad, dude. Like, at that time, he just came out with a, like a low tech edit. Too. Oh yeah, yeah. How did yeah, yeah. how did you end up filming that? I I think it was just like he came to Seattle. I, that was like when I had started riding again because I was working at the bike shop. And what was it like seven? And I was on a Sabrosa in that in that whole. Yeah, it was a quick shit, but he did that crazy three over the yeah. Middle, and he kissed a girl afterwards. And yeah. Shit. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we yeah. were like, yeah, dude, hooked that full up. So we gave him a frame. A couple of months go by, he like hits us up. He wants to come to town. So it was like, all right, so who wants? We go swoop up this kid Hoder and let him stay with you for a bit. So I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm down. So I go, I swoop him up in the airport and he comes to my house. I think at that time I had like Cardona and Little Jeff. I had a bunch of people like standing in my there house. There was like an S and M apartment in we, Orange. I had, right? I've had multiple ones. This was before yeah, S and M. The only reason why the S and M apartment started is because of me and him, basically. Like yeah, he I wanted to place. stay. He wanted to stay. We're like, dude, let's just be roommates. Muller helped us with the rent. Mm-hmm. And then that just became a crash pad for all And Tony ended up fucking living there. Tony who? <laughs> Tony and his wife. Or his girl. Cardona? Yeah, Cardona. Cardona, yeah, yeah. Oh. Cardona lived there. And yeah. his dog. Everybody lived there. <laughs> yeah. Everybody. Was, it, was, it, was living with Tony Cardona Rory bad? Lived there. It sounds Rory like you you weren't 100% happy with this. I mean, he, he's an awesome dude, but, no, you know. Yeah. It was funny. We he, have our bad times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or not us, you know, as you know, like, we don't argue or nothing, but we both have had our bad times. <laughs> Might not be the best of roommates, you're saying? No, no, just like bad times. Oh, like they doing both been yeah. in bad situations. Exactly. Right? Yeah, from from your perspective, good. like what was what state of mind was uh was Hoder in at that time? Was, he was he was in productive mode. That's just when he got his frame. So it was all about the frame. He he had his mindset on three and El Toro. That was a big deal. Like that's half the reason why I moved okay. to El, moved to California. He's like, I'm we're gonna do this, dude. It's gonna take me a couple of months, or but I'm gonna do this shit. And uh, he was just loving the fucking weather and shit too. It worked out. I guess he liked hanging out with me too, so it was cool. Why did, <laughs> yeah. why did you need a couple of months to go three El Toro? I don't know. I just wanted to like get into like the full groove of things again, and like that's when I was like filming with Larry Alvarado all the time, yeah. and like for those like uh, QPs, QPs yeah. that we did, and like I don't know that. Yeah, it was the whole idea was for the for that first QP was like his welcome to team edit. So mm-hmm. I mean, he didn't have like a time restriction on it at that time. That's before web edits were so popular, and people were posting things on Instagram. But I banged that shit out quick oh, as dude, fuck. That was dude. we were there for ten minutes. Like, yeah, <laughs> when you threw it out, Toro. Yeah, yeah, we were we, there for ten minutes. Probably. Literally showed up. I was like, oh, I'm about to just firecracker down and shit to warm up. And I'm about to just go. And that's what it was literally like yep. 10 minutes. Yep. He pulled the first try. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Oh, 
very nice that you uh, could show up there and, and leave uh, unaffected, unlike our cameraman here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's fucked up. KO. Uh, <laughs> all right. So any other like good memories and stuff? Like, Was, was Hoder in full-on party mode at the time, living in Orange? No. Uh, often not, no. Like, Hoder, Hoder has many sides to him. Like, when he what was, are they? Tell us a little bit about the sides, because I know, I know of a few, but yeah. I'd, I'd like to see how you categorize them, having spent so much time. Like, with, with me, he has, like, his productive bmx side like uh-huh, yeah, yeah. where i go i go to work every day and i come home and he's like yo i did this this and this and he's got like 100 clips that he filmed that day or some crazy crazy shit that he did with somebody that day are you eager to please dylan no he's no, just, i think it's, it's just, more like a homie thing yeah like it's it's cool. they were it was like the beginning of my fucking snm career and like i was trying to prove to them that i fucking that i'm like beyond what i was into and i can do this oh yeah it was so, like a break <laughs> Hoder has that side, but don't get us. Me and him, that's why we get along as well. We have that crazy drunk side that we can just go party and get loose together. So it's, it's almost, it works out great, just like the rest of us that work at the building. You know, we're all, we got two sides to us. We got Jackal, Dr. Jackal, and Mr. Hyde. How do you think that Chris Moeller feels about Mike Hoder? Does he see a little bit of himself in him, you think? Yeah, somewhat, yeah. What, what's, what's, Ho, what's Moeller's technique for dealing with somebody like Hoder who's a little bit of a, a problem child? He's I mean, fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. He's like he he's giving me like I mean, he just pretty much let me like pick my route, you know, like what I want to do. Like even from the beginning when I made when I got my signature frame, it was like I had the Sabrosa or no no no, I had the Sabrosa and I liked like the geometry sort of on it. And then I got like a Tody Cardota frame. That was the first first S and M bike I got. And then I like grinded the fuck out of the dropouts and I was like I liked like the bottom bracket height it was like eleven five and shit. I was like grinding the dropouts and I was like, "This is what I want my bike to look like." And then like, he was like, "All right, cool. Let's do like a little run of them." And then like, you know, I tried out like a three bikes maybe. They're all they're all, like, all three chrome prototype frames. And then like, he was just like, "Boom! Let's just like throw it into production and see how it goes." Yep. And then it just fucking took off from there. And then like, then it was bars. And then like, that was before like the bigger bigger bar like people i mean they had the s&m slams or whatever but i was like i like my shit wide at the time you know 30 yeah how, how was that because i remember when his bars came out that uh, they seemed to really take off people they, seem to they, be really into them they, they still did. take off well, the, the hoder bars still like crazy yeah yeah is the totally. is the btm like one of your most so frames? i mean btm has never even been revised it's it's always been exactly no the way. same for how like, many the only years thing now? we've ever had to do is come like widen the rear end to fit fat damn tires, that's dope yeah I mean, shit how long has it been Five years. Yeah. Damn, Unrevised. that is dope. Version, how, version A. How many millions of BTM frames have been sold so far? I don't know. Many I millions? Don't have those numbers for us. But Moeller did say it's the a, other day it's the best selling frame in the whole building. Really? Yeah. Out of everyone. So you take a lot of Begin. pride in that? It's definitely close to the, it's close to like the S3s. You know, like really? S3 is probably like one of our best bikes we ever had or whatever. Wow. It's close to that for sure. That's crazy. What do you think it is? Why do people love the Hoda frame so much? I think it's it's originated with the short, it's like one of the first bike with a short rear end. Yeah. And then it, it's also like, it's not too gimmicky in any one direction. Like it's not super steep in the in the front end. It's tall, it's beefy. People know it's a good frame. So. And those fucking colors are so fresh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and I started that whole the whole color game, bro, just killed it. <laughs> trans now, colors, everyone's copying. Trans colors. What's the name mean? Uh, bless this mess. What's uh? It doesn't stand for anything else. Like, what is the the overall meaning of it? Can we talk about it's this? It's just uh, BTM's just like a graffiti crew that I'm in, and it's, it's like a worldwide, world like world renowned graffiti crew that if you know graffiti, you know what the fuck BTM is. And like, I just kind of like growing up at like Green Lake Skate Park after like. You know, after working at the bike shop and shit, I just, you know, I started, like, hanging out with, like, even before that at Seascape, I, like, would be with all these, like, kids that wrote graffiti also. What? Nothing. Is anyone, nobody's talking, right? Keep going. What? I was just, yo. Shut the door. Someone's throwing up. Who's throwing up? <laughs> Kane. Kane's throwing up? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Can we say why? He probably doesn't want us to say why. No. Oh, my God. He had, he had, he's one, not he used had to American he, food. He had one too many shots at the bar. Let me tell you. He's not used to American food. A dab will do you. A dab will do you. Yeah, you should probably close the door. Yeah, can you just cut that down? That's fucking awesome. Jeez, we no, 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 no. We're not cutting that out. A dab will do you. That's good. Okay. The Chinese government. So what were you just talking about? Thing. What, do you think they watch this? I don't know. All right. Uh, 
Yeah, what were we just? Oh, uh, uh, your frame. You're your frame, frame is so awesome. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. yeah. That's the, that's uh, the yeah. best. Did you ever? No, no, did you ever talk about the meaning of BTM? BTM. Oh, yeah, yeah, what the BTM? What does it mean? Like, who are these? I just, I just like grew up hanging out at, like the Seascape skate park and shit, and like Seascape and then Green Lake skate park. But I was always with these like, like Eager and Crams, and just like some graffiti writers that like I grew up with, and like they just, I don't know, they were in this graffiti crew called Three A, and then I was in this, and then there was like, a, they're like. I don't know. It was just like another crew that's just a little bit bigger and like more like, I don't know. It's just a little bigger of a crew or maybe even not bigger. It might even be the same, but it was just like different. I don't even know. It's just another part of the crew. It's like a two crews in one type mm-hmm. shit. And like the homie one day, the homie Tread was like, yo, I want to like, is it cool if I like put you in BTM? And I didn't write graffiti at the time. You know, I was just, he was like, you just kill it on the bike. Like, can you just be like part of the, Part of the crew and shit and i already kicked it with everyone too so it was like kind of worked out and then i was like yo is it cool if i like name my my frame this shit and he's like yeah of course bro hell yeah and that's shit that's another thing too is like i hear like my friends that that do graffiti and travel around the world they go places and they they see like my frame at their homie's house and it's just like what like even japan so like my my friends went there for like a month and they stayed at this dude's house he had my frame hanging up on the wall just because it said btm like Damn. not even so, a, not even a bike rider. So, did, you, did you ever in a million years think that you would have a, a bike a bicycle frame with your name on it? Uh, after the Sunday thing, no. <laughs> <laughs> what about before that? No, you I didn't really. Did, I didn't really think about that yeah. type of shit then. You know, I wasn't like. Yo, so so after you got down with BTM though, did you start uh, doing graffiti yourself, or are you are you just a bike rider? I'm just a bike rider. Yeah, I feel. You. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, but but so. All right, so 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 you're on S and M. We talked about the BTM, right? What? Yeah, and then like the then the front or and then the uh, bars came out, and then like I made like the bigger bar that's a little taller. It was like an eight point five at the time, like S and M slams or what? Like yep. eight and, we had eight and a quarter, which were the grand slams. So that was like the biggest bar kind of out there. And then I yeah, and then I did like eight six. I think it was eight six five to eight, be six, exact. Two, five, eight and three quarters. Yeah, there you go. And or eight and five eight. Five, eight. Something. It was just, and I made them thirty wide, and like the you know. It, I don't know what it is, but I mean, everyone out in the Northwest always rode big bars. And then like, I rode them like cut slams growing up and shit, but then I like got into it a lot more. And it was just like, I just got super into big bars and I just and Not made to steal them. from your shine, but I think the sticker had a big part in it. Oh yeah, yeah. The that's Hooters true. one. Yeah, the yeah. Hooters sticker. I came up with that sticker one night. He did. That's a not, it was a good sticker. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a very, I don't know. I think people just trust. They see a bike part with the word Hoder on it, and it's just kind of like, yeah. well, if you yeah. can handle him, it could probably handle me because exactly. nobody's as big as you, or, yeah. or you know. And yeah. then it's, it's made by a reputable company, so it works out. I have heard, I've heard good things <laughs> about this S&M world company. Yeah. S&M bikes forever. So, baby. was it a big decision when you got the logo tattooed on your hand? Let's see it. Can you put that, that on was, the camera? That was like right. Fuck up, Nair. That shit was like right after. Uh, that was like what six months after I even yeah. after I gotten on. That's yeah, right around the. We, time. me and Dylan went to the tattoo shop one day, and I just got this fucking, and I didn't even really want the S and M at first, and then the guy just like threw it in there, so I was like, what? Oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and now I got it fucking on my face right here. And then like, so you're pretty confident you're gonna be down for life. Oh yeah, dude, I ain't fucking leaving that shit ever. It's got a label on the side of his van. <laughs> yeah, dude, I got a fucking <laughs> label on the side of the fucking whip. Oh, <laughs> so okay, you after you finished living in Orange, what was your next move after that? Damn, what? he moved out halfway through the S and M. Like he didn't live there the whole time. Yeah, the S&M. what moved back to Seattle? Or? Yeah. I think yeah, I moved back to Seattle for a little while, and then SF. Like, we went to Marco for a little bit, and then yeah. you went to back up to Seattle. Seattle, and then you moved to think New York. Yeah, and then like, and then we. Me and Eddie and Jackson did that, uh, and Def Paul, we did that trip out to New York uh-huh. with Marco, and uh, I, I went out there, and that's when I, like, met, that's when I, like, met Ed for the first time. Or, oh, no, actually, okay. no, 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 no. That's in 2005 or 2006 when I went out there to, when I went out to New York to three that gap, that's when I met Ed, Ed and Vinny, and that's when I, like, in Blackman and all these fools, and Nigel, and you just got, you get along with everybody out there. You yeah. think that they were like your kind of people in a way. Yeah, especially like Ed and like just all you know. Yeah. The gap at the banks is that the gap you're talking about? Yeah. And then like that's when I first like met Ed, and I ended up staying at the shack for like I don't know, a fucking good twenty days, I think. Yeah. Yeah, just like that's when I met Ed and shit. But then like, oh shit! <laughs> but then you moved back out there after you, that was a thunderous noise. Yeah. 
and then they, uh, yeah. you mo- you moved out there after you were living. Uh, so why'd you end up moving to New York though? Because I I went out there to film for that that little like uh, that little web video or whatever with Marco and and Jackson and Eddie and yeah, Jeff yeah. Paul and uh, I went out there to film. And that's when I first met like or hadn't seen Ed in actually a very long time. And then he was like, "Yo, like you, you want to come? I'm having a Red Bull contest in October. You want to come out?" And then like I ended up like going out there for that Red Bull contest, like, you know, two months later or whatever. And that's when I met my, my, chi- my ex chick and whatever, or that's when I met my ex chick. And she was just like, yo, could you like, you want to just stay? And I was like, figured, well, shit, I ain't got anything else going on. So then you made the move to New York and then I made the move out to New York and just, I pretty much just like stayed. How, how, how was it though? Like, how did you adapt to the New York lifestyle? It was dope. Cause like Edwin showed me everything. Really? He really took you under his, his Yeah, his he wing. Took, we went everywhere. Like yeah. Every single, for like the first year I was there, we literally rode everywhere, went everywhere. He knows everyone. Yeah. So it's like, I, I just got kind of like brought into it. Everyone just started, you know, like, what's Dude. up, Hoder? You know? That sounds awesome. Hoder does things very easily. He does, huh? Yeah. We take him anywhere. And Any city I can go to, I can instant. just figure out. Like, Mexico, instant, like local. He knew where to go, driving <laughs> everywhere. Crazy. <laughs> so you you love the lifestyle out in New York though? Was it awesome for you? Yeah, it was fucking sick. And like, I never thought in a million years I'd be living in New York City. Like, yeah, yeah. It was that was insane. You know, I'm like, it was just that was just another chapter in my life. But it was a you know it was a good good experience. How many years total did you live there? Three and a half, almost four. Why'd you end up leaving? Because me and my ex chick split up and. I don't know. I just got the fuck out. And this is something that you occasionally will uh, drunkenly Instagram about. Is uh, <laughs> yeah, I need st- to quit doing that. Don't <laughs> no, don't put this on the air. <laughs> are, you, are you angry about her? Can we talk about her at all, or are no. you just gonna leave it out? I'm gonna leave that out. All girls are crazy. Yep, crazy as fuck. <laughs> so uh, after you made the move out of New York, though, where, where'd you go? Um, then I moved back to Seattle, and I've been out in Seattle for like the last eight months. And uh, I got like a job. I was like. You know, I, I just, like, quit low-tech or whatever, and then, like, I don't know, it was, like, not really making shit anymore. I mean, I, may, I still make the same amount of money from S&M, which is, which is killer, you know? But, like, yeah, hold on. Yeah, new. Can you get them to t- tell them to get them the fuck out of there? Huh? I know, and I fucking hate him. He's fucking the worst. Get, just, get him you the hell out of there. Yo, can I just take a piss real fast? Yeah, yeah, do that, because oh, this is a break right now. We're, like, pretty far in, but... All right, we're rolling again. All right. We're back. We just took a slight little break because some motherfucker was making noise outside. Crazy peep game, dude. <clears> Hoda <throat> had to take a piss, which we're going to include the footage of him taking a piss fucking as well. Puke fucking bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it smells so bad. What is Chinese puke like? It's Sorry. fucking it's, horrible. He had, he had um, um, umami burger. <laughs> <laughs> it just... <laughs> Amazing. Uh, all Welcome right. to America, Kane. So we were just talking about you leaving Seattle. You left Seattle. You came no, out New here York. for a month. Oh, oh no, you oh, yeah, left yeah. New York. You came out here for a month. Yeah, I, I, I came out here for a month because originally my ex chick was gonna we we're gonna she was gonna come move out here and then like I came out here to like look for a spot and then she didn't like anything I looked at so then I was like you know what man fuck this like I'm not even gonna fucking do this I'm about to just end it. <laughs> so you were over it and then you moved up to Seattle. Oh, so then I just went, I went back to New York after California. I stayed out there for like a few weeks and then like ended up just going to Seattle from there. And like, that's when, that's where I've been out. That's where I've been before I just came down here now. And so what are you, uh, what are you in LA for now? What's the plan? I think I'm going to try and make a move out here. It's like, hell yeah, do it. We need, we need the Hoder (laughs) force in Los Angeles, dude, or at least Southern California. I feel so safe when I go out with you. Yeah, (laughs) dude. It's good when he's down there. He's productive when he's down here. He has people that will film him and shit. You know? exactly, yeah, you got yeah. footage. There's lots of photographers down here. S&M's here. And everybody's willing to film with Hoda. They love it. Yeah, I'm, I, and I'm, I'm like willing to, to fuck dude. I fuck my foot up doing the wall ride, but... Hey, can we talk about that crazy fucking wall ride that you did in that animal ad over the fence? Oh, yeah. That's so how do you, how'd you think of that? Well, one time, I th- it was either Tom or Bob Sherbo. Tom White or Bob Show, I forget who, which one it was exactly, but they had, they had like took me that, to that wall ride and they were like, oh, you should do this shit, like whatever. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll do that someday. Like <laughs> that thing's crazy as fuck. And they were like, Stricker's been looking at it for like 10 years. Dude, he ain't going to do it. So I was like, shit, dude. And I, I started thinking about it. And then like me and uh, I like, then like after like a few months, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do that shit. But like we got to go there 
you know, let's, let's go there in like a month. And then we went there in a month or whatever. And the, the first time I went there, I didn't even end up doing, going over the fence. Like I went there and like, there's like just a normal wall ride. And I was just like blasting this wall ride. And Bob's like, dude, you could fly over that fence. And I was like, I was just nervous at the time still. I was like, fuck, dude, that's fucking gnarly. And then like, then like maybe it might even been a whole year later. I fucking went, we went, me and uh, Bob Sherbo and my ex chick and Rat Kid and uh, Little Jeff, we all went to, uh, we all went down to the North, like North Carolina Outer Banks. Just Bob rented some house for like a week. We just went down there just to like chill and ride like skate parks on the beach and shit. Mm. And then while we were down there, I was like, you know what? I'm about to fucking do that wall ride on like right when we get back. And he's like, no way. He's like, no way. You're, I was like, dude, I'm gonna fucking do it. But I was I was supposed to like it was on the way back. I stopped in Philly. I was just gonna stay the night in Philly and do it the next morning, but I ended up like my my chick at the time wanted to get home and like I wanted to get home. We've been like out of out of town for a week. And I wanted to get the dog back and shit. And like so I took her home from I took drove like just finished the drive and went from Philly all the way to New York, dropped her off, called Bob, I was like, I'm gonna be there tomorrow morning. Got in the car the next morning, like eight in the morning, drove the fuck down there. Just like we just went to the spot. I was like, all right, dude, it's go time. We just went to the spot. I did like I, I don't even I don't even think I, I maybe hit the wall just like going negative speed just to like just feel it out just a little bit. And then usually you know the way I do shit, I was just like, yo, you I'm just about went to, for it hundred percent. Yeah, I just was like, oh, I'm about to just go up the street and come turn around and pedal with my fucking ass off. How many tries did it take? It took uh three. Three in total. Third, the third try was, but you kind of felt like you had it the first two times too. You didn't fall that bad, right? No, I didn't even. I didn't even fall. Like the first one, I landed and I was like going. There's like an. It's like an off ramp of like a freeway, so cars are flying off. Yeah, this that shit. must like, have been the hardest part, right? Yeah. Well, we had like luckily this, this like jogger going by was like super cool and was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll watch out for you." And then like he told us when it was go, but first one I landed and I was going straight at a stop sign. So I was like, "Fuck that, dude!" Just got rid of the bike, you know. And then the second one, I landed and my foot slipped and I popped my front tire. And then the third one, I fucking pulled and I was like, holy shit, dude. That, and it really, and I was like, like stressing out about it for like a fucking year, you know, like <laughs> just thinking about it all the time. I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then like when I did it, I was like, what the fuck? Like, it wasn't that big a deal. It was nothing. Dude. It was psyched. He called me about it. I was psyched <laughs> as fuck, you know, but like, I was just like, fuck, dude. I thought it was going to be way way harder i fucking went you know over the shit i was like damn hey i just thought of another one that i know that you tried recently while you were up in seattle mm. oh yeah how'd that go they're talking about the one that jimmy levan jumped back in the day you tried to three it right yes sir and what that was supposed to be the cover of ride i don't know if the cover but i'm just right now i'm like in the process of uh like in the works of doing a interview for ride yeah yeah how's that going uh it went good but it went good with you know but then i crashed because he Z was there. Z came up to Seattle for a week, and uh, like the first day when he flew in, I got like two fucking dope ass photos. Like one big ass wall ride over a rail, and like another one like I forget jumping over a fence into a Safeway or some shit. And then like you, you, I could only do the, this three on a Sunday. Oh, okay. So it's the parking lot. Yeah, so <clears throat> yeah. So he flew in on a Saturday, and then like he left the next like Friday or whatever. So I wouldn't get another sunday so it was like the second day he was there you had to do it yeah like had to go for it so we like went there and i fucking just looked at it for around 10 15 minutes and just fucking did what i did and i was like yo i'm about to turn around and go what happened i landed both tires in the bank and slid out fucking bullshit did you get wrecked oh yeah i got fucked up i had knees or rocks on my knees for like fucking two months after like picking them out all the time with like a fucking like a little razor blade, dude. This shit sucked. Like, the world is gonna fucking lose their mind when that footage comes out because it's probably know, so dude. crazy. So even isn't the crash is so fucking sick, dude. Like, you landed like pretty, <laughs> pretty good. I should just count it. <laughs> you, did you land like pretty solid? Like you basically kind of did. I landed it? both tires in the fucking bank, and like because the bank's offset, you kind of have to under rotate. I just spun like a straight three and landed like you know kind of at an angle, and the sh- fucking back tire slid out, dude, and just. Oh, have you been thinking about that three for a while? For years, for years and years and he years. He found that gap. It's, yeah, I found that gap. Yeah, oh, he, that's, he that's, showed that gap. See, that's another reason, too. I called that gap out 
I called that gap out, and then Jimmy ended up jumping it. Oh, so you wanted to jump it back in the day. I wanted to jump it back in the day, and then Jimmy ended up jumping it. So I was like, oh, so was that a reason why he kind of had beef with you back in the day? That was another reason, too, because I got kind of mad about that shit. Now we're getting super deep. That's that's an old one. I remember that shit from back in the day. But yeah, that, that's if you see Jimmy Levan right now, is it all love though? We're all cool. Yeah, man. Okay. like like once like like even like Z when I, even when I just tried to three it or whatever, he sent like or he like told Jimmy and he was like, "Holy shit, that's amazing!" You know, I'm like, oh, yeah. thank you, Jimmy." So <laughs> was was the rest of Z's trip kind of wasted? It, where you weren't able to really ride after? Yeah, that? I, I, I was like pretty much fucked. Like we just got drunk the whole time and like <laughs> it was sick. That's cool. Do you feel like you're kind of like um, he didn't get drunk? Yeah, you'll have a few beers, right? Yeah. Uh, do you feel like you uh, are the last of a, a dying breed of a sort because you still are really just doing big ass setups? Like, I mean, that's all I know how to do. Like, yeah. I, I don't, I don't go to this. You know, I don't go to like. I'll go to the skate park. I love going to the skate park, but like, I'm not practicing shit, dude. I'm doing what I know how to do, and that's about it. Like, and you just love the big fucking dream setups, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean, like. Yeah, of course. You got anything else big in mind? I'm not here fucking. In LA or what? I'm not playing on two foot rails like fucking all the dudes I'm staying with. Fucking John Ricani, <laughs> what, what do you think? What do you think of the way that Ricani and them ride? They, I mean, Ricani, all of them fucking kill it, you know. Of yeah. course, but like you're just not into the nibble I stuff. Can, I can't be hanging out on the fucking flat rail in front of the crib, fucking hours and hours and hours trying to fucking <laughs> bar ice, bar ice, manual bar double pegs. So you never, you never have fun doing tech stuff or what? Never, never. You will never catch me trying to fucking a trick for more than like three tries. So if you tries. if you go to a flat ledge or a manual pad with the homies, are you gonna even bother trying to do a manual 180 or what? No, I'll probably just sit in the sit on the side and talk shit. <laughs> there, there was a flat ledge clip filmed recently. What's Rickandy trying to say? Rickandy saying he's a liar. The other day, you tried to hop on the, the loading dock manual 180 for like 35, 45 minutes. But that was like good height of the loading dock, and I hadn't done a manual in a while. <laughs> <laughs> like shit. <laughs> manual 180 on on a three stair. How how many tries does it take you on average? Oh my say? god. I never even pulled it, but I gave up. But it was like I gave it, you know, I gave it a good ten, maybe twelve. Ten, ten's solid. He yeah. filmed a flat ledge clip in Mexico. Yeah, I did film a flat ledge. <laughs> what was that? One eighty, like just a one eighty pegos, like Indian out. Yeah, oh, that's pretty that good. Pretty funny. That's a good trick. Who's your favorite rider of all time? Yeah, that's what I was gonna want. Mm-hmm. I'd probably say, you know, it's either the Gons or or Troy McMurray. Like yeah. straight up. What about these days? Who are your favorite people to watch ride? Just my homies. I just like watching like my homies just kill it. You know. Yeah. I don't like watching them on these fucking flat ledges and little little rails, but <laughs> but that is your like homies watch- kind of your your homies ride a lot of flat ledges yeah, and flat rails, right? But I, I I do like watching. Rickani's just peeking around the corner, <laughs> just like I know you're talking about me. That son. fool kills it. Watch the fuck out, Rickani. You think Rickani gets a bad rap or what? I mean, I I don't know. You seem like you really like be, him, though. You, you've, I, like, defended him on Instagram and shit, too, though. Oh, yeah, dude. He fucking kills. He's the homie. Yeah. Oh, that's good, though, because Sean McCain is going to do the show soon. Soon, yeah. Supposedly. Supposedly. He's scared, I think. He is scared. We got questions for him. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. I like Rickani. I'm a Rickani. We're, we're, when you actually come, Rickani, we're actually going to have Rodeo Peanut here as well. As a special <laughs> guest, all of them. They're, they're all, they're all going to have hoods on. <laughs> Hoder, what do you think of Rodeo Peanut? Fucking love that shit, dude. Keep it up, guys. Don't encourage them, even, even when they don't make encourage, fun of your homies encourage. or what? <laughs> Keep it up. You ever think they've gone over the line with one of your friends or nah? I mean, yeah, they go over the line, but like, fuck it, dude. The, it is what it is. You can't stop it. Do you think people are too thin-skinned to BMX or what? Hell yeah, dude. People are like, like, that's why I like kicking with like the homies that ride that, that I kick it with because we can fucking crack jokes on each other all day and talk shit to each other all day, and it's just, it's just, it's just love. It doesn't matter. Like, I'm just talking shit just to like get a fucking laugh out of everyone you know yeah, like yeah. fuck it <laughs> yeah i think that's the the problem with a lot of that too is that people don't understand that it's joking because and people are joking yeah. and the kids that are reading it don't understand that these guys are joking so these kids start yeah. hating these people for no reason you right? ever you, know, you ever actually you ever actually look at like who follows you on instagram they all got like 10 friends like they don't know shit they don't know like they don't even understand the concept of joking around with your friends because they don't have any friends exactly they, they don't <laughs> got group texts yeah like they, they don't really understand like how high our level of cutting ass on each other is yeah. you know what i'm saying like how like i can say vegan is a fucking piece of shit and juggalo. I can say that too. Yeah. Barely yeah. Vegan is a you barely know him, and you can say. It. Trust me, you can say. It. Yeah, <laughs> but it's all good. It's all. It's all love. Yeah, yeah. All right, I got a good question for you. What's the drunkest you've ever been? Holy fuck! No, the night I punched the window out of my dad's house and fucking lost all the blood in my body and 
had to get fucking hit with the shocker things and the fucking on my chest. How old were you? That was, I was 20. You were 20. And how did you lose so much blood from punching out a window? I cut straight through my artery on my wrist and like fucking my neighbor, my like blood neighbor that I like was smoking Sherm with then was like, he saved my fucking life. He took my sock off. He saw me through the windows, like one of the other windows, like slip and fall in my own blood in the kitchen and like i slipped and fell in my blood and my fucking he just came over and kicked the back door in and fucking pulled my sock off. i was co- completely covered in blood at this at this point and he got you to the hospital and he and- called 911. and luckily there was like a, he just took my sock off tied around my wrist as tight as he could and that like was pretty much one of the things that saved my life like they said if he didn't do it i've been dead for sure that is fucking terrifying Whoa. and like and like it was crazy because there just happened to be an ambulance like there was happy to be an ambulance like down in the street because I live in like kind of a shittier neighborhood of Seattle. It's not like horrible, but it's like still it's kind of shittier. And they somehow just happened to have an ambulance right down like just a couple of blocks away. And that like oh. that also like saved my life. And the first hospital they took me to, I have like a some crazy type of blood. And like the first hospital that they took me to somehow just randomly had that type of blood. Nowhere, no other hospital did. The closest Whoa. one did though. That's fucked. Do you believe in fate? <laughs> no, I don't even know what the fuck that means. So. <laughs> how would you define fate? Yeah, how do you- oh, that's a good question. Uh, do you believe that things are predetermined in a sense? Things happen believe- for a reason. Yeah, do you- that's basically what I. Nah. Do you believe in God? No. Wait, that's the first time I think we've ever talked about a higher power on the show, which is it's a, something nah. I talk about all the time. That shit ain't real. Have you always uh, known that you didn't believe in God? Yeah. Yeah. Like ever since, like yeah, ever since I was like eight, my mom fucking. It was kind of crazy. This one, this one's pretty good too. Like, ooh, okay, good. My mom was. It was like Easter, and I was eight years old, and my mom was like, "Yo, we're about to go to church for the first time ever." And I was like, <laughs> "I was like, oh, all right, whatever, you know, yeah, we'll go to church. Sure, I don't know what's gonna do for me, but then we, uh, she like loaded me and my sister up in the car, and she, so we get in the car, and my the dog we had at the time was like uh, this golden retriever, Charlie, and he used to like sit in the driveway like in the sun in the morning would just like heat him up in the driveway just love laying there right behind the car my mom fucking completely like we didn't even think about it type shit oh, my man. mom just get in the car <laughs> drove over his ass didn't didn't kill him or anything like didn't like put him out of his misery or nothing like that but like dude my mom was like nope not going there again <laughs> like, <laughs> not, so your mom took it as a sign yeah it was just like oh no we, we we don't need to be doing that i wish that my mom had done something like that because going to church is like all my worst memories of like being a kid i just hated it so Dude, try, much. try going to catholic school for eight years plus four years but that explains why you're so fucked up like, you're like a stripper or something you know? <laughs> but, but there's a lot of hoder stories that we could potentially tell right now no, but I, I like what like what well that, that's, that's one of the things i think I, I, we, we should talk about a little bit because so many people i think so many people have misconceptions about you or so many people you know bmx is so small people have heard so many crazy hoder stories because i think pretty much anybody that goes out with you <laughs> is gonna have a good hoder story yeah. i went out with you the other night and we, we have like 26 we went out the other <laughs> night the first thing that happened was we walked out of your apartment and uh, a guy showed us his dick yeah, a man in a dress that. showed us his dick. Remember that vegan? A vegan, you weren't so even there. Fucking weird, dude. Yeah, <laughs> what's wrong with these fucking homeless people? L A. L A. Yeah, L A. That's amazing, Dylan. What's your best drunk hoder oh, story? Man. I That's bet you've seen some should, good ones. Yeah, we shouldn't. Don't make him tell his own stories. Let's tell our, our stories. There's, yeah, there's a lot of them. Um, a really good one is probably one of the S and M trips in Austin. We somehow lost a key to all the bikes that were locked up together outside the bar, so we just all stood outside the bar for a while, and it was like older team, like Stricker, Behringer, him, a bunch of us. All of a sudden, a fight breaks down, like two bars over that comes to us. Hoder gets involved in the fight. He gets involved with like the biggest dude ever. And eventually, we get into this tuffle, and someone gets bricked, and Hoder <laughs> got like kicked in the face, bricked the dude. No, I didn't. I didn't. That was not me. You didn't brick him? No, no. All no, I remember is you got kicked in. That. You got kicked in the face, and then you still just like got up, and this dude was huge. Like, Bigger than Hoder, probably like two times bigger than Hoder. Yeah, I got kicked fucking hard in the face. I yeah. definitely didn't do anything. Dude. It was crazy. It just, was that was probably like the biggest fight that I've like biggest dude I've ever seen Hoder fight is kind of why I was like taken back by that one. Like he he'll fight people, but that dude was insanely huge, like linebacker status. And, and you were just, just down. He went straight for the dude like instantly. He loved it. One of those. Uh, and that, the thing we were just those, minding our business on the street. It was those Tom and Ed fools. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was what? Tom and Ed that that 
Rick. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They, but, yeah. they're the one. So <laughs> hanging out with Tom and Ed, would you say that they're a bad influence on you? Stricker, just everyone, dude. At but that Tom's time, dude. not that bad of an influence, I would say. I think I could see Ed being a bad influence. Was, I didn't even it really. Probably, it was probably Ed more than anything. Yeah. Sure. I didn't even really know him, you know. So it didn't even like. Because Tom's, in, I, I Tom's was, like I just, low key. I just like, thought all my, you know, I just thought my friends were getting beat up, so I just jumped in, kind of shit, and like, I ended up getting my ass whooped, but like, yeah, and then I don't know, the crazy shit. Just well, happened. you also okay, Super Bowl story too. That was a good one. This is just the other day. Yeah, he thought he was in the Super Bowl, and yeah, he wasn't. And I wasn't. <laughs> he called me like, I'm at the Super Bowl. And then two days go by, I was like, yo, I found out I was like 20 miles away from the Super Bowl. 20 miles from the Super Bowl. <laughs> you were in a parking lot and you thought you were in the Super Bowl. It was fucking, it was like, I wish like Dude, I had. that's some private party that he got. I wish I had like a, like a homie with me because I was just on solo in the middle of Arizona, like <laughs> fucking dead cell phone, spent all my money. Dude, I made it home at like two in the morning. That's the craziest part. And I have no, I, I still don't know the address. I definitely didn't know it then. My phone was dead, and I made it like t- from like fucking what Scottsdale. Yeah, all we were the way staying to- down the street from ASU, and he was in Scottsdale and made it back. And somehow. made it back to their house, which was like it was in the middle of like it was just all I remember. Like I think what it was was it was I knew that there was an AM PM or some shit. That's like all we could think of that maybe was how somehow I, it worked. That was a pretty good one. I walked in the house and they were like, "How the fuck did you get here?" I was like, "I don't, I don't, I don't have no clue." Can you tell us the story that ends with you shitting your pants under a car while the cops search for you? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Can I just include that anyway, since it's not descriptive? Yeah. Okay. What's uh, your what's your the favorite your favorite road trip you've ever been on? Favorite road trip, probably like, probably gr- like growing up, just me and like Davey Watson, and this kid Tyler Bergstrom. We used to just in Austin Gilmore. We used to just fucking. And Jack Maddock, holy shit. We used to be in a fucking prism. <laughs> five bikes hanging out the back. Five people in the car. We were just mobbing just down to Portland and shit. And, like, that was always, like, the funnest shit. Hell, yeah. You know, like, just being with, like, friends that I grew up with. And, like, the time we were all, like, just learning. Like, what's shit, I wasn't learning tricks, but I was just learning how to go higher and faster and bigger. And, what's the worst ass beating you ever took? Shit, dude. <laughs> Which be- one? Because Jesus that's the thing Christ. about Hoda that people might be surprised about is, like, I feel like a lot of people, if they were to sit there and tell you stories about them beating people up, you'd be like, oh, he's bragging. It sounds like he's like, you know, trying to sound tough or whatever. But when Hoda does it, he will just as quickly tell you about some crazy story where he gets the shit beat out of him. Oh, yeah. And he doesn't give a fuck because he's not really bragging. He's just no. telling you some shit that happened. He tells you the real real. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, it is. I've gotten my ass beat plenty of times. <laughs> but that's just come. You win some, you lose some, whatever. Yeah. Where do you uh, see yourself in your life right now? Like, what, what's, your, what's your goal every day when you wake up? I don't know, like right now, I just, fuck, I want my foot to heal. And then, uh, I don't know, I just want to like, I, I really just want to like ride and just, I, we were like working on this S&M DVD right now and like, we're trying to have it out in October. I'm fucking pushing for my foot to feel better so I can just start doing some shit. But like, how many clips do you have? One. One. Or <laughs> You're going to need more. I guess three, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> a full, a few. It yeah. probably will be a little bit later in October, but we're pushing to do it like in the end of the year. But hopefully. Yeah. Is filming for a video part a big motivation for you? super big and like i will i want to i want it to be like better than facade and that's going to be hard to do what do you consider your main video parts facade and then the snm dvd and then the facade the snm dvd and then like um shit i don't even know yeah, i feel like that's, you're like a person that's had like a lot of your best stuff spread out between different road trips and stuff like that like the, oh well there's isn't there an animal section to you that's real good but yeah, it's, it's not I, like a yeah. real it's part of like a kind of mix isn't it yeah, it, it, that was like a real good section. Though I do, I do love that shit. Yeah, you, know, you do a lot of sick shit in there. It's just domestic, right? Yeah, it's just yeah. cool seeing you ride fucking New York spots, and then that one you have like a bunch of cool spots that you ride in. Yeah, yeah. and then I just want to like, I don't want to. That's the whole thing is like, like the whole facade thing. I just rode shit that like I liked. It wasn't like spots. Yeah, and that's like the type of shit I want to do for this this S and M. I don't want to hit something that people have been hitting. Yeah, because I want to do something that I've fucking that no one's ever gonna do, right? Type shit. Hey, you know what I forgot to ask before? What happened with facade? From your perspective, he sold it to a fucking rollerblader or some shit. <laughs> but wasn't that his? Yeah. Wasn't that his girlfriend at the time? Like he, I, I don't even it, it, that whole situ. I think she. I think they got married. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Like, that I think whole situation. Was Bruce crazy. Crispin was was with like a, a female rollerblader that he was dating, yeah. and then like they started the company, and then he for what they broke up, and then he mm-hmm. like left her with the company, and mm-hmm. what the hell is she gonna do with the BMX company? Mm. 
We should definitely have Bruce Christman on here so he can tell us the real version. Of that. <laughs> so man. that version is probably not complete. All right, you're, you're on our list, Bruce. He Bruce is up, on the list. He's come up on so many podcasts. You got to bring him on by now. But Bruce Christman, yeah, the man, the Bruce, man. Gabe Brooks talked about him say, glowingly. Gabe Brooks, yeah, he's, he's a daddy. He sent him a bunch of love. <laughs> yeah. So that's dope, though, that you're just out here riding and everything, and uh, clearly you're pretty happy with your situation with S and M. Uh, oh yeah, there's. I mean, they've never let me down, uh, like ever, and I have no like. I'll never complain about that shit ever. It's just, that's my family. Like, uh, How does it feel? Um, you know, you guys just got back from Mexico and I saw some of the footage of dudes just freaking out over you. And I've seen you in a couple of places. I remember in Estonia, dudes are swarming you for, uh, for autographs. What's, what's that like? Because, that, again, that's got to be something crazy you never expected. I hate that shit. Really? <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I'm like... I forget how to spell my name, dude. I get so like <laughs> nervous. I'm like, dude, you really don't like signing autographs. Let me get your fucking autograph, kid. Like, damn. they probably <laughs> always want to take photos with you and everything. The right? photos are cool. Like, that, that's like a little easier. Just, he's good with that stuff. Right, he's cool. actually really, really good with kids. It's, that's awesome. He, yeah. he's got like I said, like he's got multiple sides to him. He's got his like hard ass yeah. side, and then, and then he's got his like I'll kiss the baby side. You know? Yeah, it's but cool. I think like as a kid that if if Hoder shows up at your bike shop and you've never met him before. Yeah. You're going to be apprehensive to even go oh, yeah. up to him. You have to wait to see that smile because I think so many dudes in BMX just look at you as. Just... Well, that's what I mean. Is he who out willingly, like outgoingly, just be like, hey, what's up, kids? What's going on? Like, walk up to kids that are just standing there and just start giving kids high fives. So they're all like, oh, Mike's cool. Okay, cool. Can you tell us about the time that you went on stage for Chris Doyle's Nora Cup Dirt acceptance speech? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was like when I got on S&M and did that rail, we did that rail contest at Interbike. How well do you know Chris Doyle? Not that well, I right? don't even know him. Right yeah. <laughs> but I won Dirt Jumper of the Year that year, so that was good. <laughs> you were just on stage. You know what's funny, though, is like, you think about it, like, if the average dumbass <laughs> dude got on stage and was acting like a fucking asshole in the Chris Doyle's speech... They're gonna beat the shit out of him. They didn't even like kick that. me off. Dude. They like, they were like, <laughs> that's the thing. You are like a bouncer's worst nightmare <laughs> yeah, when you walk into a ball. Yeah, yeah he, like, he will knock the bouncer out. Exactly. No problem. Yeah, nah, but dude, I was just like, hold, like, dude, that shit was crazy. I was up on there just like accepting an award that wasn't mine, and like, <laughs> and it, like everyone was behind the pedestal, like, it, it, like celebrating his shit, and I'm in front of the pedestal, <laughs> like even closer to the crowd, <laughs> like. Ah, do you, do you remember it at all? No, not really. I, it, I, what I do remember is Chris Muller gave out five hundred dollars to every rider that did a trick mm. in this in the rail contest, and so I got my five hundred bucks that night at Nora Cup. It was a free bar, a free <laughs> bar, and I spent all five hundred dollars <laughs> at a free bar, <laughs> at a free bar. That's that's what I do remember. Yeah. And wow. I, and I do I do remember accept, accepting my award. That's a classic hoder. Right that's there. fantastic. Yeah, that's awesome. Because you know, the other day when Xavier played uh, the show, Hoder was on stage. With I was him on stage. Everywhere. Bro. He was just all up in the shit, just grabbing the mic, calling everybody pussies. <laughs> and Xavier, lo- I was kind of worried at first. I'm like, oh man, Xavier's gonna be pissed off. Xavier's loving it. He's like, this is my motherfucking man, Mike Hoder, with me, blah blah. blah. <laughs> I'm surprised that footage didn't pop up, but it was pretty. He's the exception to the all rules, man. You know who you remind me of? You have for years, and I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know if you know him or not. Lou Bickle. Oh, no. you, there's we, a lot of a lot of similarities between their personalities. We talk about Lou Bickle on the Ed Polio podcast as well, so maybe I can just use the same clip of him because he's the guy in the beginning of uh, Albert Street. Uh, Albert Street, who's getting his uh, his fucking he's he eats a light bulb, snaps like breaks a oh, light yeah, bulb. That guy's cool. He eats a light bulb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's, yeah. And growing up, he, he <laughs> you like I ha- he was like my father figure where we would go out and if nobody would fuck with us because he's the biggest dude. Yeah, and you remind me of him quite a bit. All those old FM are fucking sick. Dude. They're just dumbasses, and it's so sick. <laughs> I love those videos. That's yeah. sick. Hey, it's good to know that there's still a place for a fucking maniac, pegless rider who does bangers only Pegas like Hoder, you know? It's exactly. Know. Thank you. Thank you guys for keeping me in the game. No hey, pegs, where, no where no do you pegs. see yourself in five years? We've kind of always started to ask this question. I don't know, man. I'm going to see where, where shit goes after this video part. If this shit's a banger, dude, this might all just work out. But if not... <laughs> Might have to get a real job. Thirty? Are you scared to have a real job? Like hell no! I just had one in Seattle when I was there. I was like only a few months, but I was like doing window installation and high rises, and I was it was fucking sick. It was eighteen an hour. It was fun. Like you don't mind doing uh, like hard labor though? No, no, not at all. How I'd could rather you do. Know? It's I'd like after, do, after living because you yeah. never thought any of this would happen. I always think about that when I remember Anastasio had an interview and somebody was like, "Yo, like." 
well, you're blowing all your money. This is back when he was just going crazy with money. And he's like, yo, like, I come from nothing. I'm not afraid to lose it. That's, that's, that's the, the way I look at money is like, if, if I die tomorrow, I'd rather have no money in my bank than a Agreed. fucking, like, than a, even a thousand dollars. What yep. the fuck? That's a waste. If exactly. Hunter has bit money in his bank account, it's a surprise. He's usually overdrawn a couple hundred dollars yeah. all the time. Are you always, scared to die? All the time. No, not a, no. You ever think about it or anything? All the time. And it doesn't scare you? It doesn't freak you out? It doesn't really, uh, it doesn't not really. Too much I mean, for me just, either, to be honest. It's like, all right, so it happens, you're dead. What, yeah. what are you going to do? What do you think, <laughs> what do you think happens when you die? I don't know. I'll probably go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking awesome. All right. So, uh, are, are we good? You want to do some thank yous or what? Uh, I'd just like to thank you guys for, you know, inviting me out. Hey, it's, like to have been a pleasure. it's like to have you. We might not have mentioned, but this is a, a dream podcast for us because Hoder is okay. a guy that everybody in BMX knows about, but not everybody knows what the fuck your deal is. So I think this is like, going to just be a cool one for people to get to see the, I hope so. the real hope side it, of you. I hope it turns out good. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'd just like to thank everyone that's just, you know, supported me throughout all these years of riding bikes and, like, S&M bikes, especially in, like, you know, Animal that's helped me out. And, yeah. And we, we got to tell you, you got to follow Hoder, Hoder. No, it's, it, what I changed it? it again. It's Mike Hoder 1. Mike just Hoder 1? Mike Hoder 1? Yeah. Like the number one. Okay, cool. Because you had he, you had a bigger uh, Instagram following going, and then you uh, yeah, freaked I, out I, and deleted it at one point. Yeah, I get I just get drunk and delete that shit. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but we got to get that back up. But so, since he's been in LA, he's just stacking G's like a thousand followers every other day. Yeah, we yeah, got right, hanging out with Rakani, hanging out with Rakani. Nah, we Fuck, all these we, fools <laughs> never shout me out. I'm getting sick of this shit. I'm about to start <laughs> taking their phones. They're fucking. Hey man, <laughs> that's o- what I do. OSS to come up. We we'll shout you out. We'll shout them all out right now. We got to get Mike Hoder back in the 10K club. Yeah, dude, I just want to get the gay and. And then I'm good again. Get him there. <laughs> Get him up there. It's a goal. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Dylan, thank you very much for uh, you guest for hosting. Me. Catfish, thank you. Sam, thank you. Sam as Bledsoe well. over Sam here. The man. Hired goon. Uh, who knows what he's doing here? Just, just here uh, to hold Hoder down in case right. anything gets crazy. He's a bail bondsman. Thank you very oh, much God. to Sean McCanny and Brandon Beagan for filming and uh, everybody else. And thanks thank for Hoder. And thanks for watching. And Tony uh, Nyer. Of Tony course. Nyer. Uh, Augie Simoncini and yeah. Kane Wang, who is sleeping Dylan here. Dylan Lloyd. Kane Wang. Vegan. The up chuck crew. Be- vegan, get get Kane over vegan, there. Show this. Kane. This is the face, <laughs> kids. <laughs> Debba dabba do. Wa- wax ledges. Yeah. The only kind of wax you need is the kind you use on ledges. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks so much. Follow us all. The come up. Follow us BMX. All. all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Follow the come Instagram. up. Subscribe to the YouTube. Suck. Fuck follow you. Mike Hoder one. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely do that. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Oh, very and, much. and uh, hashtag Dippy Dippy Girls. Who's that? Dipper girl, girl dip, girl dippers. Hashtag girl dippers. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's girls that chew tobacco. All right, oh, that's disgusting. Yeah. All right, that's, all that's right. A thank you all. That's a wrap. To all right, thank you, Hunter. I appreciate. Yeah. It. Peace. Pizza. Fuck yeah, Hunter. Yeah, dude. That one. This one went good today. Oh.